nose till I get up. Time is barely on our side. Someone mentioned in the comments about the wiring harness, so I'm gonna go through and explain kind of the hard parts of the actual um, the process. Now it's not too difficult, mainly for the engine bay. You just go through, go along from started at and in my case I started at the passenger side, went all the way around, across the front, all the way across the driver's side or to the driver's side, just taking off any wires that could have been there. Now in my case the engine was already removed, so it was just mostly um, grounds and stuff like that that were just um, onto the body that were there. Um, a couple modules, so the ignition module and um, just little things like that that were on there. Um, uh, the main majority of it is actual clips as well that are holding the wiring harness on. You kind of Some of them are like zip tie clips that are probably going to be so rotted or just so brittle because um, they're plastic that they're just going to fall off. You're, gonna, you're not going to be able to get them off clean. You're probably just going to have to either cut them or just rip them off. And then there's other um, other loops like that they're just tucked into and those are easy to get them out. But the few things that were tricky, um, I'll show you right now. So what I would suggest doing first is going through and taking off all the connections that are on the inside of the car. Now this may be a lot more difficult if you don't have the dash completely removed like I do and all of the um, heater accessories. But there's going to be around five connectors back here. So there's two here. The, there's a green one and a black one right there and then there's one other connector it plugs in right into the side here so once you get those connectors off there's one tricky thing that we ran into now these connectors are obviously really old and they're gonna need a little bit of persuasion to get off just be patient you don't want to break anything we actually did have a wire break um, here but it's not too too bad we can fix that no problem another thing that had to come out was there was um, right beside this black um, connector here there was one a blue one right beside here and that was actually part of the wiring harness and it's what the dash plugs into so these three um, or these two that are on here now gets plugged in the dash and there was a third one here that gets plugged in the dash now getting this out of this box here turned out to be a lot trickier than um, we expected so let me just explain to you how they come off so there's four tabs on each side one two, three, and four. So those tabs, I guess, um, they're meant to make the plastic a little bit more malleable in those areas so you can actually set it up so you can um, pinch the plastic in on those sides and pull it out. What was happening was it just wasn't budging at all. The plastic was in there so tight that we couldn't do anything with it. So what we ended up doing was just getting a die grinder, not a die grinder, sorry, a Dremel, and dremeled out the sides because there's the little clips in there just enough just so we can get the one side pop through um, and once we once we literally put the dremel on there for like say 10 seconds um, on each point we just did the one side like I said so up, up, up on this side here and then right below it right there once we did that the connection came off no problem so I would suggest go doing everything on the inside first so once that was done, we could actually push through the boot through this hole and get all the wiring through there. Then the other thing on the inside, because it does wrap completely around to the driver's side. So on the driver's side here, right into the computer there, there's the computer plug. So the main plug that goes in the computer and that also um, is part of the wiring harness that has to come out. But that's a pretty easy connection. We didn't have any issues with that. You just gotta feed it through and uh, be very careful with it. You don't want anything, to, any of the wires to break or any of the connections to get messed up. So I'm just gonna go in the engine bay and explain a few more things. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the driver's side. So that hole underneath that clutch master cylinder that's where the boot was for the ECU plug 
and then the wiring went all the way along this way. And there's just a couple, there's a couple mounting points, a couple things there. Then right there, up top, right there, that's where your ignition coil was. And then there's also a module there. And then you came around to your lighting wiring harness and then across. Now on the passenger side there wasn't anything too crazy to be honest. So you have to take your, your battery positives and negatives, they're very easy and then right attached up here there is kind of like a fuse box I guess you can call it, more of like a fusible link. Um, and I thought it was going to be a real pain in, in, in the butt because on the 280ZX, it actually, from the, uh, the unit that they have up here, it goes into the body again, up top here, up there, and I guess it follows the wiring completely through. So in this case it didn't, you just unscrew the box and the whole box comes off with it and it's, uh, it's very easy. But other than that, most of it's pretty straightforward, the only tricky part was inside on the passenger side that one um, connector that we had to get out of that housing. But other than that, you guys should have a blast taking the wiring harness off, especially if you are doing cleaning up the engine bay and painting it, it'll make it so much easier. Um, hope this helps. If you have any other questions, put them down in the comments. And that's it for this video.